Hello again from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo Golf Tangle. I just finished the installation of the new demodulator into the racks, and uh, it's all up and running for this part of it anyway, so I thought I'd bring a little uh, video to you to show what I did. In my earlier videos, I showed how I uh, built up this new chassis and uh, got the CRT circuit and all this high-voltage circuitry mounted into this new cabinet. It all worked most of the time, but the darn CRT display was just giving me nothing but trouble. Uh, there was always black blobs in front, or the display would be deflected way out to one side, and uh, I just couldn't get it to work right, so I, I decided to uh, scrap it and go for another idea. I was uh, searching through YouTube one night, and uh, came across this video called The Cross Banana Display by F4WEF, and I thought this could be a possibility. It's a simple enough circuit. Uh, it, it's based on the Arduino code. It uses one chip and uh, this uh, small LCD display. It has a couple op amps for uh, controlling the gain of the mark in space uh, coming into it, the signals. And that's all there is. It uh, eliminates a lot of the CRT uh, circuitry, like mainly the high voltage transformers and stuff like that. So it, uh, it, it was a, kind of an idea to try. It was a bit of a learning curve for me. I had to learn how to uh, program these uh, certain chips that Arduinos use. It was a, that was a challenge for myself. And then I got the thing breadboarded up and uh, figured out how the rest of the circuit worked. It finally, it finally came together and uh, I was impressed. So here's a, a little video of it, how it actually works. Uh, of course the Model 28 is hammering away there, typing out some kind of text. And I'm just following the uh, wires kind of where we reverse here from the tall table over to the modulator where I've got the uh, CRT circuit disconnected and I've got two wires on the ground coming out of the demodulator circuitry over to this uh, new perf board where the banana display is running. This is a little closer up view of the uh, actual display. It, it looks better in real life than what it does in the video here because it's actually just it's painting the uh, elliptical pattern just with dots and it's doing it very fast so there's bits and pieces missing but all in all it looks pretty darn good I think. it. it it's going to do just fine. Uh, there's switches on there for you can change the colors of the display and uh, and then there's the uh, three pots. One is intensity and the other two are your mark and space signal gain controls. So um, it, it's a neat little circuit. I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm going to build it up. So I was back to the lab and I had to build up a circuit board for this new circuit. Took some designing to get the layout right and uh, it came together. The uh, fancy display is piggybacked on top. It plugs into a small set of uh, pin sockets on top of the board and uh, becomes kind of like one module. The three potentiometers are on a small metal plate which is bolted to the existing circuit board. This way everything stays as a complete unit. So I made up a small bezel to fill in the hole around the display and I kind of just clamped it to the existing demodulator chassis, hooked things up and tested it. Now the trick was to get this all mounted into the original or the existing uh, front panel of the chassis. The uh, problem or the tricky part was the old CRT and all the controls for it uh, made a lot of holes in the panel and I didn't want to have to build a new faceplate. So I, I took it apart and uh, filled in the holes with some aluminum and welded it all on the backside. Then with a little bit of body filler, um, I. Uh, went over the holes where it was going to show and and filled them in, sanded it as smooth as I could. It could have been better, but it worked. And then I uh, spray painted it with my favorite color, uh, Primer Gray. After the Primer Gray, I gave it a coating of clear lacquer and then uh, started figuring out where all the parts are going to go and how it's going to all going to look for labeling. I've had a few people who look at my videos uh, wondering how I do the labeling. So I thought I'd just dedicate a small part of this video to that, uh, that process. I start all this by just having some of the parts in the panel that uh, the labeling have to work around. And I uh, just simply print out on paper, ordinary paper, uh, what I want the labels to look like. So I can cut them out, lay them on the panel, and then figure out if the sizing looks good and spacing, etc. Once I've got that all figured out, I use this... Uh, Deco paper. Unfortunately, this company is no longer in business, but there is others out there. I uh, print it out onto this paper, which is special, and um, it's what I'm going to use for the labeling. 
I make multiple copies of the of the printed labels because you know things happen and you might get a mess and screw things up so you got something to uh, reuse but uh, not only that uh, this is a real stiff cardboard type paper and uh, you got to fill the whole sheet up or you're just wasting it so you might as well fill it up with lots of lettering and maybe you could use it somewhere else so this is how it's done I I take the decal printed off piece of paper and I cut out uh, the print I'm going to apply to the panel just cutting around the label itself I uh, leave a bit of a margin and uh, you know cut it to the uh, smallest size possible I didn't place the label on the panel just to get a feel for where I want to put it and uh, maybe use a straight edge for alignment purposes, etc. And, uh, you know, that, that get ready to put it on there. I have a small bucket of uh, lukewarm water and I uh, put just a dab of moisture on the panel to help the uh, decal slide on it once it's been applied. I then take the label and hold it by the edges and, and apply it to or, or put it in the lukewarm water. Continue to soak the uh, label in the water. It, t it takes a little, takes a few minutes or not even that much, a few seconds to uh, get the label to come loose off the paper. You, uh, you just keep checking the their labeling itself, and you'll feel it get loose on the on the cardboard itself. And when it gets to that point, you know it's it's ready to be pulled out of the water. So then take the label and lay it on a panel where you kind of figured out where you wanted to position it, and uh, by holding the one end of the label with your finger on top, uh, grab the cardboard underneath on the other end, and then slowly pull the cardboard from underneath it, and uh, you know, and keep things as straight as possible as you uh, pull the cardboard away. At this point, the label can still be moved around on the panel, so if it's not straight, uh, move it around a bit, and then just take a soft tissue and and smoothen it out, try and get the bubbles from underneath it. Uh, it may look like you're small bubbles, but they all go away eventually. But you just work on it and uh, get it as fast as possible. It slides around to get everything straight, but if after a few seconds it, the decal starts to dry onto the panel, and uh, if you're trying to push it around, it, it may tear or uh, or it doesn't go on straight. Well, you just take it off and cut out a new uh, second copy of it. That's why I make more than one copy on the printing part and uh, start all over again. But it's, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. If there's any excess water, we'll just take the soft tissue and, uh, you know, and just dab it away. You gotta be careful though. The, the label will slide around if you uh, wipe over it too hard and you wanna make sure it stays in the same place. So once I get all the decals or labels put onto the panel and get all the water dabbed off it, I let it dry for a little bit and then I just uh, give it a light coating of uh, clear spray or clear lacquer again just to kind of help protect the labels and seal it. So when everything's dry, I uh, bolt everything back together on the chassis, install the switches and the new display and uh, test things again, fire it up and it looks good. Uh, one thing about it though, uh, with the uh, old CRT and all the high voltage power supply transformers gone, I have a I have a lot of room in the cabinet now, inside the chassis itself. One of the things I got kind of excited about when I found out about all these teletype feeds on the internet was this auto start channel. So this is the um, audio streaming channels for the teletype signals. And uh, the first one I turn on here is the... Uh, news feed that's on 24-7. Well, I don't want my teletype running 24-7. I can't afford the paper. It's a good uh, audio feed for a teletype to uh, show a demonstration of the machine or testing, you know, that sort of thing, etc. I click on the auto start feed here and you notice it's quiet. Uh, it only sends out uh, uh, information or teletype signals uh, just every once in a while so I can monitor 24-7 and not waste a whole pile of paper. Another thing I don't want uh, running all the time is a full-fledged uh, desk computer. So it's a perfect application for uh, a little Pi-type computer I have laying around here. Um, 
And plus, I have lots of room inside the chassis to mount it. So it was a perfect combination. I had to use a little better quality of 5-volt uh, regulator for the Pi. I'd use a little switching one that's mounted underneath it. Uh, the Pi didn't like running off uh, ordinary 7805 analog or linear type regulators. It's, it just wouldn't boot up properly. The Pi doesn't have enough audio drive to uh, run into the modulator, so I had to buy this little miniature audio amp. It's a stereo amp, actually, and the Pi drives it directly. Uh, one of the output goes to the uh, speaker. Being it's a balanced output, uh, I couldn't ground one side, so I have a little isolation transformer which uh, couples it to the demodulator and keeps everything happy. Works really well. I had to add a few more connections on the back of the panel, uh, uh, internet jack or a CAD5 jack for the internet connection. Uh, 12 volts, an external 12 volts. Everything else runs off the AC line, but the 12 volts is... Uh, coming off the shack supply to keep the Pi running 24-7, even if the power was to go off. If I want to run the teletype off, uh, say, an HF receiver, well, I just merely plug in a uh, audio line into the uh, audio in jack and remove that jumper. That's on the left-hand side there, the curly cord. So with it all done, I got the thing mounted in the rack and uh, looks pretty darn good all around. By my standards, anyways, I think it's pretty good. Well, that was a nice short little video, so it wasn't too boring. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. 73s now from Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle.